three, 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 three more. Three, three more production. Go on. you guys so much for tuning in to the Brimo Productions YouTube channel. It's been a minute since we actually created a video. Thank you guys so much for our patience. We are still in the game. We are just adapting to the situation that's going on right now with Corona and really trying to figure out where we can pick up and continue to prosper and create content and actually put it online so this is new to me and i know it is new to you guys as well so i had the pleasure to interview ebenezer he's an artist that's located in london and he's also from london i just wanted to show show you guys you know a range of content that Breemore productions can offer i'm so excited because Bremore Productions is pretty much a media company, media production company, and we range from fashion, music, and art. So this aspect of Bremore Productions is definitely music. So you guys take a look at this video. Um, please make sure you stream Ebenezer's music. You go follow him on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to Bremore Productions YouTube channel as well. And also subscribe to our podcast and go to our website as well to, you know, stay updated on events, virtual events now events content podcast episodes and also youtube channel episodes as well we look forward to entertaining you guys during this time make sure that you also support all the creators that you can support especially the black content out there i'm just keeping it real if anything we need all the views we can get so please do not forget about the black platforms we look forward to entertaining you guys Take a listen, take a look, make sure you subscribe, make sure you go follow Ebenezer and stream his music. He's dope. Alright? <laughs> yeah, how long have you guys been on lockdown? So god. Uh two weeks, two weeks, I would say. Yeah. When they said when they said lockdown, I thought it was going to be a big thing. So I flew back from LA. I was like, nope, uh, I want my free health care. I'm flying back <laughs> to London. I'm not taking no chances. I flew back and then everyone's still in the park. Like eight people all together, still in the park. You see kids and their families and everyone's just running around just on their bike, acting like this is normal. I'm like, yo, I have like family that are suffering from this and you guys are just acting like this is normal. It's flipping weird, but you have family guess, that was affected by the coronavirus. Yeah. Wow. Did they? Hopefully, they recovered, right? Nah, they're going through it right now. Um, so, yeah, man. it's a bit crazy, but my prayers. Fingers crossed. Sending positive yeah, man, energy towards your way, bro. That's deep. I, I have I yet to meet. I haven't I haven't met anyone that you know has been affected. So this is my first time like hearing someone actually say that they have a family member. Yeah, and it's so fun and games. We all, we all ha ha and he he till it happens to one of us or one person that's close to us. And I'm like, yo, like I've seen it so many times. People are like, yo, take this shit seriously. And I've got asthma, so I don't play no games. That like, I'm making sure. Like everything is sterilized, everything is wiped down, and I'm not making contact with anyone. It's, and yeah, shit um, crazy. so you literally been in the house for like a week since you flew in from LA, right? Yep. But uh, to be fair, the quarantine life is just my lifestyle, so I'm I'm okay with it. Like same, <laughs> same. 
So I noticed. I noticed that um, you you uplifting your spirits by having like quarantine sessions on your IG. Yep. How's that going? Yep. For you? So, um. Hi. <laughs> oh, you have doggies, not just one dog. You got doggies. Oh, hi. I don't like this one so much. I love this one. Wait a minute. How you gonna be uh showing the, <laughs> <laughs> the, one's, uh, the little one's crazy. He's actually crazy, I'm convinced. He so, yeah. yeah. So, well, a lot of energy. Yeah, um what you said, yeah, I have been keeping busy by doing the, these quarantine sessions. I've been like uh making a song from scratch. Uh beginning to end in less than an hour all on Instagram live every Sunday. Um, so I'm going to do another one tomorrow, 8 o'clock London time. So that's, I think, 3 o'clock New York time and 12 o'clock LA time. Do you know Dallas, Texas time? I unfortunately don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm in Dallas. Yeah. Well, right now it's it's four ten in Dallas. What time is it over there? Fourteen is twenty two. It's ten. It's ten ten. So it's, oh. so it's the time where you are two p.m. No, it's four ten. It's four ten here. Fourteen. Fourteen ten. 4.10 p.m. Oh, 4.10. Oh, sorry. I thought you said 14. Oh, 4.10. So that's uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. 4. It's six hours behind. Yeah. So that means it is 2 p.m. Dallas time. 2 p.m. Dallas time on Sunday. I'll be oh, doing yeah. Instagram live. Yeah. Oh, Sunday, got you. I'll make sure my uh, people tune in so they can experience okay. your Instagram live. Have you had anybody to um join you on your your beat challenges? Uh, nobody. I don't think anybody would dare challenge me. <laughs> because no, beat you made songs on... in like two. What you say? You made a song in like one hour. I, I made two songs in one hour. So they, they, if you if you gonna come with it, you really gotta come with it. You can't, you can't give me no beat challenge. Beat challenge, you can make that in your own time and upload whatever you feel like uploading. But I'm like, nah, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, you will see me write, produce, make everything then and there in less than an hour. So you gotta come with it, or like you ain't really saying nothing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had, I, I saw like I've been doing it all year round since two since years ago i've just been uploading like leaks of my i, I leaked the whole of bad romantic 2 before it even came out if you pay attention to my instagram you see me i'll be posting it with the lyrics and captions and everything so you can read it and really like connect with what i'm saying um so when people started challenging me like unbelief beat challenges i'm like no i've been doing this it's not a challenge to me i've been doing this a challenge is come on Instagram live and show me that you can do it without getting help or like hitting up your friends to come and do this and that. But it's all good. I have, so, a, it's all good. I have a question about that. Go ahead. What is what is the what is the supreme song making tips? that you have like how how can somebody make a song and you like respect it and you love it it's a very great question um oh that's a very good there, there, there's there's so many elements to a great song um whether it's great chords great melodies great lyrics um and if you manage to piece all of them together in a, in a harmonious way where they all just work together seamlessly, then you have the makings of a great song. Now there are, there are certain tricks that people usually follow, like formulas, 
to a great songs like some a lot of great songs are written in certain keys a lot of great songs say certain things and they don't use pronouns and they ask questions in their songs like these are the like things to make your song stand out more because like if you started a song with a question you automatically connect to the audience it's like you're asking the person listening a question so they have to answer the question within themselves they don't necessarily have to call you up and be like hey this is me answering your question that you had it's just like a rhetorical question that we all have within us that we can all answer and just stuff that people relate to say things that people go through like whatever don't try and write like somebody else write your own truth and somebody will relate to that truth and it more time uh turns out that a lot of people relate to that truth and then you should be easy you should be easy from there it's always it's ah it's never easy that's a lie it's never i was about easy. to say uh <laughs> wait a minute you know, that's not easy <laughs> it's never easy but you can you can only do your best and just be true to who you are don't try and pretend to be something and not just speak your truth and then it will do, eventually shine yeah. i believe yeah i know i know like right now we are going through crazy times but are you finding inspiration during this time yeah i mean the the, the first the fur on sunday not this sunday but a couple sundays ago uh the first song i wrote on instagram live was quarantine Second song was called Pandemic. I don't know what I'm going to call this one. <laughs> uh, but it's just, it just seems to, I can get inspiration from anything. I can write to a brick wall if, if you just put me in front of a like, empty blank wall. I could write to that. It's not a problem for me. But um, yeah, I mean, we, we take inspiration through our pain, through our sorrow, through our joy. Mm-hmm. And we always just try and, try and find some silver lining and try and turn a negative into a positive. It's just, it's a shame with this virus because this, this virus, man, it's, it's crazy. It doesn't discriminate from old to young. When it comes, it comes. Just have to hope and pray and just, you know, try and stay safe. Social distancing, it works. Good point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, we have to make sure that we, you know, continue to stay as positive as possible. You know, that's what I've been speaking yeah. out into my audience is don't panic. You know, I, I understand it's like a serious situation. It is. But try your best to remain as positive as yeah. possible. Because I feel yeah. like I feel like if we are under stress and we just in a panic, then that would compromise our um, immune system. Immune system. So how, yeah. how are you keeping saying like give people advice on how they can mentally you know keep saying during this time? Well, a lot of people say meditate. Um, the way I've been doing it is I've been exercising. Uh, exercising is a great way to relieve stress. Um, learning something new Mm -hmm. Um, whether that be an instrument whether that be a language whether that be a course and i'm trying not not to procrastinate the best thing to do is everything you needed to get done get it done just start take it get a blank piece of paper and write a list of everything you need to do whether you do it in priority order, you want to number them for priority and then just start ticking everything off the list. Once you get through that and you've done and you have nothing else to do, learn something new. When you've got nothing else to do, call your friends, check up on them, just keep active to keep busy and it'll, it'll keep your sanity. Absolutely. That's great advice. So I see that you're an artist and you are a producer. Have you been a producer longer than artist? Yes, I have. Um, I started writing and producing um, way longer than I've become an artist. Like half the time, should I say. Um, but yeah, I started writing in... I was waiting for producers to send me beats and it got long waiting. I'm very impatient, so I was like, 
I'm doing this myself. So I started producing myself. I wasn't great at first. I was awful at first. And the more I practiced, the more I worked hard, the better I became. And then I then needed people to demo the songs for me so I can pitch them to people and try and get them placed. People wouldn't demo songs for me. So um, I was like, you know, I want to do this myself. Started demoing songs myself. I'll be showing my friends. My friends are like, yo, this, this is dope. You should put this out. Like, this should be your song, blah, blah. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever, blah, blah. And then eventually, um, yeah, I, I made a secret project. And I was like, I'm just going to put this out. And a few people heard it and was like, yo, dude, like, yo, let me play this to other people. Bro. And it just, it just took off from there. And then I just started doing it. But fortunately, the ability of being able to write, produce, and mix as well has allowed me to work with people like Ty Dolla Sign, Danny Lay, uh, who else I'm gonna forget a lot of names, Craig David, Frank Montana, um, so many others, Mahalia, um, Ashnik, or so many people. Uh, I'm just ever so grateful. Um, I don't take it for granted at all. That's dope. Yeah. That's really dope. Would you recommend um, artists to learn how to produce their own music or at least Hell. have some type of... Hell yeah. Music? Hell yeah, because we live... That what a lot of people don't understand is <clears throat> it's just still called the music business and you have to know your business. You can't, like, just rely on others to know your business for you. So when, you, when you're making a song, you have to know the producer that you're working with is going to get half of that percentage. Yeah. I'm not saying it's stingy with money and like, oh, just try and get, take all the money for your stuff. No, not at all. But you have to understand that me being able to write, produce, and mix, I don't have to wait for anyone. I don't have to seek anyone's approval for a producer to be like, I don't like that. I don't want you to do that. Uh, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to approve the song coming out because he sent the beat to someone else. So now this is the song that you was really looking forward to. You was going to put it out, but he sent the same beat to someone else. And now your song can't come out and you believe this song is a hit. So I say, don't wait for anyone. Learn how to do it yourself. It's easy. I promise you, it is easy. All you have to do is just take time, be patient. Nothing, nothing worth having is like, comes easy just to take time practice no pain no gain <laughs> no pain no gain and then once you're there then like I, I still collaborate with producers like a lot of my friends will be sending me beats and I'll, I'll write to their beats and the stuff that I've got placed for other people like that I've produced sometimes I've, I've brought in my friends who are producers I'm like send me a loop um, and I'll add some stuff to it and I'll send it to the person that I'm working with in the session that I have contact, uh, contact with that they don't. So it's just, then I just link my friends and the like people that I work with together. But without them, I'm st I can still, I'm still self-sustaining. I can still operate. I can still produce. I can still write. I don't have to wait for anyone. And that's the main thing for me, not having to rely on someone else to feed me. Yes, I definitely love that. I had to learn how to create my own graphics for my flyers. So, to. I man, I say that all the time. Like, don't wait on no one. This is this is the best time to do it as well. Mm -hmm. Whoever does your graphics, be like, okay, instead of me paying you to do my graphics, give me a tutorial. Give me a template tutorial. Show me how to do X, Y, and Z. You learn it. Most of the stuff is from YouTube or well, Google. You learn it quickly. If, if, if it's a case where you do most of the work and then you give it to him to do the finishing touches, so, uh, so be it. But you have eliminated most of the, the waiting, time, waiting of time and you know, having to ask someone to do this and that. You can just do it yourself and get it done. Yeah. And then you learn that you love what you do and it just fulfills you even more. <laughs> yep. yep. So... Right. Um, iHeartRadio just named you as On The Verge Artist. How was that experience yeah. for you? It's crazy because I'm just, I'm just a guy from London, England, just 
<laughs> out here just chasing my dream. So for, for them to even notice me, shout out to my team who, who's been pushing me and trying to get me as much exposure as possible. And for them to notice me and be like, we're going to pick him over however many people there were to choose from is a blessing. Like, I do not take it for granted and I'm grateful. And it's not to say that any, all the others are not talented or not as good or don't deserve it. Um, it just happens to be my time. Uh, so I'm grateful. I'm really grateful to the uh, iHeartRadio for choosing me. And yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. That's really, that's really, really, really dope. So it's it's amazing how you have pretty much connected like a, a bridge from London to America. How is yeah. that possible? What happened? What relationships did you build to create that? Uh, one was with my manager who I'm with now. Um, I didn't necessarily, I wasn't in the best company before. Um, I, I felt like I was very misunderstood and people didn't understand my vision and what I was trying to do and the barriers I was trying to break. Um, but my manager understood and the team that I've got, 12 Tone around me, Steve Bartles, Doug Morris, CC, Ashana, all of them, Dwight, D-Train, they all understand the vision and what I'm trying to do and how I'm trying to transcend location, transcend time. I want my music to, to not just be for the moment. It has to live on, like, Tra travel from different countries to different countries so they understand the vision and yeah the, the, my main link was my manager he was like I believe in you let's go like just tell me what you need and one thing I like is he, he's not always a yes man it's not just like yeah whatever you want blah blah sometimes he'll be like no this is what you should do and we can go at it and be like no nah, I'm right you're wrong but I can tell he cares. He, he, he's only saying no because he cares and yes because he cares. And if he's wrong, he'll admit he's wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll admit I'm wrong. We're just, like, we're going to make mistakes. Let's make it together rather than someone making a mistake for me and I don't have a say. Yeah. So, again, I'm, I'm grateful for having the team I have now. And my dog is snoring like an old man. <laughs> you don't pay bills. Stop snoring. What are you doing? <laughs> So um, you was also featured in Rolling Stone. And Rolling yeah. Stone said that you proved that every rap song is, is a lie, that it's better when it's, when it's a lie. Like, I did not <laughs> that, understand that was, this shit. I was like, what? That, that, was, that was their words, not necessarily mine. Um, what, what I was saying that, what I was saying before they, um, said that statement was um, not everybody is a shooter, not everybody is a trapper, not everybody is rich. So all these rappers that claim to be like, oh yeah, I, I sold X amount of drugs and I did this. I'm like, it's a lie. That is a hundred percent lie. Not all of you. Some of you are singing about someone else's life. Right. And it's okay. I, I get it. The fake it till you make it. Um, thing but I was just like there's there's a lack of honesty in music nowadays oh. and they just be selling dreams oh yeah I'm this I'm that no you're not just be honest it's okay to be honest right. and that's one thing I, pr I, I I always try to do in my music try and be honest as possible and um, um, I try and be as honest as possible and yeah Relax, relax. It's okay. It's okay. I think the time should have been definitely different. It was, well, I get it. They probably used that title for clickbait. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> it should have been I, I different. Definitely say every, yeah, I, I definitely, you can, I'm sure if you read the article, I definitely did not ever utter that. No, that every didn't. song, that song is better when you lie. No. Because there really be some dope raps like whether or not they're lying or not there's some dope stories that come out of it and I do not hate or try and belittle them for not doing it a certain type of way there's no formula to doing 
you know, music. You just live your truth. If that's what you want to talk about, that's what you want to talk about. Do you get it? I'm, I'm not one to hate. I'm just saying, I just feel like in music nowadays, there's a lack of honesty. And not everyone is a shooter, not everyone's a trapper, not everyone's a drug dealer. So, just and be I think, honest, be I, true to yourself. I think there needs to be more stories highlighted, in, especially in hip-hop, because it purpose traits that only trappers, like only black people are trappers and twerkers yeah. and strippers. And it's like, there's levels to blackness, you know? Yeah. The fact yeah. that you're in London and I'm in Texas and we both black. It's, yeah. it's different. It's a range of black people, and I think we need to see more of that, you know, up front and personal. Yeah, I mean, it's, shit. It's not only black people that be trapping, and uh, you come to London, the the Turks be trapping, the uh, you know the English people be trapping. Everyone that can, <laughs> can get it. It's like in London, there ain't no discrimination. You get it from wherever everybody you get trapping. It from. Everybody shout, you get me? So the Somalians, the Turks, the Greeks, Jamaicans, Africans, uh, everyone's hustling, trying to make ends meet. And I, I would never knock the hustle because you've got, I always tell them, go get it by any means necessary. Yeah. With that money. So I see that, um, Mariachi flow is getting a lot of buzz. Yes, ma'am. And <laughs> I have a few quotes that I have questions for. The first quote is you said Parano Paranora, um, I got I got secrets I can't tell my lawyer. What are the secrets yeah. that you cannot tell? <laughs> <laughs> if I can't tell my lawyer, there's no way I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lawyer. I have secrets that I can't even tell my lawyer. That's I want to know the secrets, though. I'm no. I can't. If my, if my lawyer don't know, I would have to kill you if I told you. <laughs> I'd have to tell you and kill you. I don't want to do that because you see, you're, you're awesome. So I, I just have to hold them secrets close to my chest, my heart. Like, not, even my, not even my best friends know them. It's like, man, I wish I could tell somebody, but I can't. Oh, and you have a journal? No, nah, I don't. I don't. It's my journal right here. <laughs> yeah, Damn. Yeah. So you going to the grave with these secrets? To the grave. Man, why even talk about them if you're not going to expose them? <laughs> good question. That's a good question. It's just to let people know that it's the reason why I have paranoia. I don't trust I, well, I, not that I don't trust. I find it hard to trust because I know some things, I've seen some things, and it's led me to be the person I am now who is paranoid and a bit skeptic and cynical of people. Mm. Yeah. Are you, like, finding ways to get over that? Like, what is your solution just, behind being paranoid? Um, uh, that's a very good question actually uh, I don't think I'm necessarily finding ways to get over it I'm just I'm just learning to adapt and instead of I'm trying to stay away from the things that will, would make me paranoid away from the people away from a lifestyle that would, wouldn't allow me to get close to people or vulnerable so I just I keep to myself I'm very solo dolo all the time all the time all the time you need balance bro balance I know I know but it's crazy though because the imbalance helps me write music mm. I almost look I'm very self-destructive I look for problems sometimes I'm guilty of that. <laughs> it makes a great story. <laughs> That's true. My second um quote is not my bitch. She's my mama Sita. What's the 
between. <laughs> where, where, which song did you hear that from? What not that in uh, Mariachi Flow? Or is it on your um your IG? It's on your IG. I got the oh, it's it's your words for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's on my IG. I let you do that. <laughs> not, <laughs> not my bitch. She's my mama Sita. That's my mama Sita. That's not because uh, sometimes we'll be referring to our, our other halves or our girlfriends or someone that we're seeing. I thought that's my bitch. Nah, nah, that's I'm not gonna use the derogatory term for my for my girl. Uh, that's my mama Sita. That's, that's my baby. That's my little babe. Oh, mm. I'm I'm so happy <laughs> you don't use the word bitch. <laughs> no, I do, I don't get to say I use the word bitch, but not for not for not for mine. Not for nah. mine. This is, if, if this is someone I'm calling mine, I can't be calling you bitch. Nah. No, I'm supposed to be uplifting you and treating you with respect. Uh, if my dad ever called my mom a bitch, you know, I'm squaring up. Like, what the fuck you mean? You'll square so, with your, your your father if he calls your mom a bitch? Hell yeah, that's my that's my mom. That's, that's my mom. She gave birth to me. I, yo, that's my mom. So... My dad's, my dad's super... My dad loves my mom to death. Do you feel like you should square up with anyone that calls a, a, a woman a bitch, though? Should there be some type of protection? No, you, can't, you can't be Captain Save a Ho just be fighting, <laughs> <out> fighting, everybody. <laughs> fighting everyone's battles. That was kind of, uh, like, that's some, not some, that's some, not Captain Save a Ho, though. That's just yeah, it, like you never know. She could be a bitch, she could be a uh, like really nasty and a horrible person, and she. He or he or she had to be right to call the person a bitch. You can't just be running up in someone's business that you don't know. Yeah, that's wild. I feel like <laughs> a lot of people do that. Got point. You got on social media, people be in everybody's business without knowing the full story. Everyone's so quick to have an opinion. I mean, not not that you can't have an opinion. Everyone's so quick to speak on their opinion and be like, "Oh, this means this and that means that." No, it doesn't. Just stay out of people's business. You know, it's a prick. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's not my business. Oh, yeah, before you run up on somebody, you you need to know why she was. Yeah, you can't have me out here looking crazy, like. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, you're, imagine you're fighting someone's battle for them, and they're like, "Oh, this guy called me a bitch," and then you you start wilding out, and then you found out that this person who they called a bitch. Key their car, burnt their their clothes, did so much ridiculous stuff to the other person. Hey, he, he just called you a bitch. I mean, shit. I called you a bitch too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's valid. In in, the, in that yeah. case, that is valid. I I get. I totally understand where you're coming from. I get it. I get it. I understand. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold you. I'm not gonna hold you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in the other quote that I found in Mariachi Flow is um you reference Kunta Kinte. Yeah. So I have a <laughs> who, are you guys exposed to American slavery in, in London? Yeah, of course. We we learn about it in history and um uh, we still go through our own like systematic racism in in the UK like it's not all crumpets and tears people like to believe like we have institutional racism out here but um yeah we we sympathize to the to and empathize to the to what happened in America and it's an abomination and it's atrocious that that what even happened um, but yeah, we have the to find a way to go ahead. I'm sorry, the things that you see on social media uh, regarding American, um, black Americans is it relatable? Like police brutality? <laughs> yeah, the police be on my shit. I'll be posting, I'll be posting when the police be like acting wild to me. Like, the difference is, yeah, this is the this is one of the I think the biggest difference between 
America and London why I can I can't necessarily understand what you guys go through like our police don't have guns mm. but our police just can't be shooting black people willy nilly it doesn't make sense I don't understand you have someone who just who was bullied in high school came out of high school said fuck this I'm going to become a police officer he becomes a police officer all of a sudden he gets a gun and now he's still traumatised from being bullied in school and thinks fuck it I'm just gonna, now going to bully people. I'm just going to go flex and just try and wave my authority around. Or you could, he could be like a racist. He could, there, there could be so many reasons why um, a police officer is just tripping for no reason. And that's not to say that there aren't good police officers, because there, there are. But it feels like in America, there's, just a, there's a bigger systematic racism. We have it here, don't get it twisted. But we, I don't have to worry about the police shooting me if I get stopped. If I get stopped, they, they will harass me, like probably smash my windows, drag me out of the car, arrest me, put me in jail. But I can still live. Have my, I still have my life. Mm-hmm. I can still live. So it's, it's different out there. I, I don't know, man. I'm, I really do feel sorry for you guys. Like, it's, it's crazy. I see stories on and videos on Instagram all the time and it breaks my heart. Sometimes I can't even watch it. I'm like, I get so tight. I'm like, oh, like, oh, come to London, like, take off your badge, like, shit. Uh, but it's it's real. Like it's 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 almost um, it's to the point where now, I, now we have to expose the fear to our children, you know, because we can't lie yeah. about it. We can't, we can't sugarcoat it. So it only makes sense to sit down with your child and be like, hey, this is what you might experience. But I don't think, I don't think um, police officers or anybody that, that size with a police officer get that. I don't think it runs through their mind like, oh my gosh, these people are living in fear where they have to like sit down with their children and have this conversation at an early age. I, I would never have to do that in London. That, fair enough that stuff happens here, but again, it's not to the extreme where I fear for my life, where I'm going to lose my life today police have stopped me i don't know if i'm gonna go home and see my kids i've got kids at home i don't know if i'm gonna be able to feed them or i've got an elderly person to look after this might be the last time like i ever see them or even think of them so i can't even get that through my head i can't fathom it because i've never had to experience that but we i get harassed by the police on numerous occasions all the time i'll be recording it as well police Stopped me one time in, in on the high road, it was busy high road. Stopped me and was like, <laughs> it was a re- it was a routine check to begin with. I was like, no, it's not because we made eye contact. There was three cars behind me. You saw me and did a U turn, so it was not a routine check. You pulled me over. No, they didn't pull me over. I pulled over myself because I saw them following me for a while. So I pulled over to make their job easier. Like, what's the problem? And it was like, oh, we want to check your driver's license, make everything, make sure everything is okay, and the insurance, blah, blah. I was like, cool, okay, check my insurance. There was, as they were running it, another police car just sped in front of me, pulled in front of me, had nothing to do, he doesn't know the situation at all, jumped out the car, oh, yeah, there's been some drug dealings around here, we need you to, um, there's been some county line gangs and blah, blah, blah. I was like, bro, number one, I'm not in a gang. Two... I'm solo doll, you see me here. Like, he's like, yeah, the police pulled you over. I'm like, no, they didn't. I pulled over myself. <laughs> then another police officer comes around. He's like, yeah, he's got a weapon in his car. I was like, huh? How did he go from routine check, county line drug dealings, to now he has a weapon in his car? Like, get out of the car, get out of the car. I'm going to smash your window. I'm like, huh? I was like, no, don't smash my window because you're not going to pay for it. I have to pay for it. So let me just step out of the car. The moment I opened the door, two of them dragged me, pinned me against the car. Like, this is broad day, like, harassing me, searching me, searching me. Open my car, looking for the weapon. There ain't no weapon. 
I'm not dumb enough to be on high road in broad daylight with a weapon. Like, so what happened? Did you end up in jail or you just got to take No, they, they didn't find a weapon. They had to let me go. There's too many, pe- too many witnesses. If you couldn't plant nothing on me, there's too many people on the high road. So, I mean, on another day, another person could be, could be different. How do you guys battle the, the racism in London? I mean... We're still battling it. Uh, we have so many institutions that are, are, are racist. For instance, our newspapers, flat out categorically racist. The, the way they treat uh, Princess uh, Meghan Markle, like that queen, the way they treat it, I'm just like, oh, one day we're going to find one of you article writers who wrote that and we're going to hold you accountable. And what do you mean by all of these racist things you're saying? Like they, I don't know, man. We we still struggle with it daily, um, from our police to our jobs. Like if you, if you, I've I've heard some people saying that they're gonna name their children like English names so they don't get discriminated against when they're going for um, a CV, so uh, going for a job, so it gives them that little extra chance of even getting through the door. Because if you got a name like Deshaun or uh, Jerome, they're not likely to pick you without seeing your face they just, they just read your name off the bat and they're like no we're not taking Deshaun because of his name they can tell that you're black they are, we want a Charlie we want a Steve a there's Charlie. just so many things we go, we go through and then people would tell you oh no London's not racist please <laughs> if you think London is not a racist, you're probably one of them. I know here in America, our um, rebuttal is we we moving somewhere else. We going to another country, and I'm like, yo, there's racism everywhere you go. Yeah, you, yeah, there, there really is. There, there is no way. It's, it's like there was a consensus amongst everyone because everyone's forgetting that. Britain colonized 95% of the world at a point. 95% of the world. So they obviously like left their their doctrines behind and their you know their way of teachings. But I'm not mad to be honest. I'm I don't hold grudges. I'm not gonna hold someone who I've met because my like my friends um, they've been white or they are white should I say um, I have some friends that are white I'm not going to hold them responsible for someone else's actions or things that other people have done because so I can only judge them on the, the character and how they are towards me but they also see the racism and they, they stand up for it whenever they see it and I always applaud them and I appreciate it because the only way we can do this is through education and if we do it together uh, let's not isolate anyone or divide anyone let's all come together and tackle it together everything that needs to be tackled from racism to homophobia to to anything that needs to be tackled like women's equal rights let's tackle everything together let's not exclude anyone because we're all trying to make this world a better place for the generations to come that's how i see it yes that's how i see it too i totally agree with you you should run for president (laughs) (laughs) I wish I Uh, wish citizenship in in America and run for president but I think you have to be like a citizen for like 7, 10 years or something but you got it I don't mind I don't mind listen if Donald Trump can become president anyone can become president exactly you don't need need qualifications (laughs) I mean look at the royal family the royal family ain't even British so I mean shit no, you can anything is possible. Never say never. So, um, is is your album out yet? Uh, Bad Romantic. Yes, it is. Bad Romantic Two. Uh, it's out. It dropped March the sixth. And Single Floors No is doing very well. It's almost at forty, so I just need to. I need some like. Just a little bit more support just to get into that top 40 position, maybe I'll plays. 
and fingers crossed um, we can keep excelling and pushing and going. Elevate. It's definitely there. Seriously. I love Flaws and All um, because I feel like that song displays the uh, complications of being in love. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy. Never easy. Like anything is never easy. Um, but with love, you have to go ahead. Um, you go ahead. Like, um, what did you say? Loving you ain't easy, but I still do it anyway. Yeah, I do it regardless. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> we, we all feel that one. It's like, <sighs> it's not easy, but we do it regardless because. It's love, like, unconditional love. Like, all the things you've said, all the things you've done, regardless, I still love you, and I'll still do anything for you. Um, even with your flaws and all. Like, even with your morning breath. Even with your <laughs> morning, I still love you. <laughs> I still love you, like. Do you do you think that type of love exists in in today's world? Oh yeah, I found it. You found it. Was it? Think the, so. Was it? Was that the inspiration behind this song? No, it wasn't. I thought I found it was the inspiration behind the song, but I hadn't found it. <laughs> but I think I found it. Now. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but just like again, like like I say in the song in the beginning, all we need in love is practice. Like hmm. it's, it's it's easy to just say you love someone. But no, you have to love them unconditionally. You have to learn to love someone, learn to to accept all their flaws, them chewing with their mouth open and smacking gum, and snoring and you can't sleep and you want to go to sleep first because you know if they go to sleep first they're gonna start snoring and then you can't sleep and you got work in the morning and got a headache because you really want to sleep you just said the realest shit ever <laughs> man <laughs> Lauren, trust me yeah. it's like I always say, biggest pet peeves yeah i always say look if i'm snoring just wake me up like don't don't not sleep because I'm snoring and you don't want to disturb my... I, listen, if you're snoring, I'll elbow you in the throat. Wake up. Stop snoring. Go on your <laughs> side. Like, come on, I need to sleep. I'm at work in the morning. But, yeah. Well, in love is practice. The beauty of this conversation is the fact that you are saying that the type of love exists because you don't necessarily hear that a lot. It does. I, I know it definitely exists because I have a I have a template to go on, which is my parents. Like my parents can argue, it can bicker or whatever, but I know they love each other. My dad treats my mom like a my mom like treats her like a wife, she's like a baby baby, makes sure he spoils her. And he's like that with with my sister as well, because they're the women of the house, so we have to really look after if she's a woman you have to look after her there is no if buts or maybes it's imperative I'm not saying that your missus can't look after you or she can't make more than you uh not what i'm trying to say i'm saying your role as a your duty and role as a partner is to uplift your partner look after them cherish them However that may be, everyone has a different love language. Some people might not like gifts. Some people might want words of affirmation. Some people might want touch and, and want to feel you. Um, so just find the love language and practice. Learn what your partner likes and love them. But I know it definitely exists. My parents are proof. That's dope. You are, you have a dope soul. Do you know that? <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Like over here, just listening. Like, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> just not asking my exes because they'll tell you otherwise. <laughs> Shit, fuck him, bitch. Blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what makes you? Last question. What makes you stand out from other artists? 
uh, I think what my unique selling point that makes me stand out is the fact that I write my music, I produce my music, I record my music, I mix my music. And not only do, do I do it for myself, I do it for your favorite artists, um, my peers who I also admire, um, and just the people I've worked with um, just make me know and make me confident to be able to say I am like no other artist. No artist can do it like me. Th that's, that's wrong to say. Not that they can't do it like me. I haven't seen anyone do it to the quality and standard of what I can do it at. And that's not to be um, braggadocious or be cocky. It's just I am confident. I've worked hard. I have practiced. I have put the time in. I've done the hustle, hard work, and the grind, and the come up. So everything I, I get now, I believe I deserve, and I am ever so grateful for. That's what I think I'm different about. That's a nice answer. So for all the artists that are coming up right now, what is your advice to keep them motivated? Uh, just because someone says no doesn't mean they're your enemy. Like, it's okay for people to say no. Not everyone that says no understands your vision. Don't be discouraged by no. Because people told, the same people that told me no are the same people that were offering me record deals right after a couple months later. Like, oh, bro, we love that song. I'm like, no, you didn't. You told me no. So don't come now and try and save space because your boss is here and you might get fired. Mm. Don't do that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay for people to say no. no. Music is not something that everyone has to love. Like Some people can hate your music. Some people can think it's corny. That's fine. But one thing you will not stop is my drive and my ambition and my work ethic. I will work to get what I deserve. Um, some people get it quicker than others. Um, again, do not be discouraged by that. Um, as long as you work hard and you build a good foundation, sometimes when people get it so quick, they usually have one song that comes out so quick and then you look to them for another song and they don't have another one ready and they just fall and they don't have no foundation of songs to land on as a cushion. But because you built yourself up, when you skyrocket with that one song, people go and check your catalog and see, oh, he's been doing this. His music has been great. So there's nothing to worry about. Just your time will come, work hard. There's space for everybody. If they tell you that there's not space for everyone, it's a lie. Because of streaming, it makes it accessible. And we live in a very quick era where things come in six seconds, everyone's onto the next. So don't think that your time won't come. It will come. Be patient, work hard. Give thanks. And that's it. That's my advice. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for taking out the time to interview yeah. me. This thank you for conversation. Thank you for having me. Make sure thank you me. go follow Bremore Productions. Like I'm applying in your DM. Like <laughs> so you don't oh, yeah. forget about this interview. I'm serious. Oh yeah. So um tell the people how they can follow you and also stream your music. Uh you can follow me at Ebenezer's World, which is actually my name uh so it's e-b-e-n-e-z-e-r-s world so ebenezer's world and you can find my music on spotify apple music Deezer, pandora amazon music google play just type in ebenezer and i should come up you should see like curly kind of hair and twists and different right. ones. i see I, I seen your afro i was like okay <laughs> I feel like you have brief sometimes. Right. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, I would definitely stay in touch. I have already followed you on all my platforms. I'm about to slide in your DMs right now, so you don't forget yeah. about the productions. Hell yeah. When you come to America, Dallas, Texas, hit me up. Yeah. I was supposed to be there, if not for this Rona that hit. I was going to be there because I heard you guys have good food as well. I was going to do oh, South yeah. by South. Oh yeah. <laughs> you come to Dallas, I would definitely take you to all the the hood spots, mm. the good chicken, mm. the waffles. <laughs> I, don't, I don't eat meat no more. 
I'm a pescatarian. So oh, that's fish. no problem. We got vegan spots. I got you. Any fish place, I'm good. Sushi, jerk shrimp, like gumbo, anything with fish, I'm there. I got you. I promise you. <laughs> All right, you stay I'll safe, you right? To. I'll hold you to it. Be safe. And you too. All righty. All right, bye. -bye.